Berkshire being a one-man show. Yeah, well, Thanks. Berkshire is not a one-man show. It's a, it's a, it's a two-man show in terms of capital allocation. There's no question about that at present. But it's, it's, it's run by many managers uh, that are doing an outstanding job and that uh, don't need any guidance from, from Charlie or, or, or me as they go along. But I might say that, you know, I will die with all of my Berkshire stock, essentially, and, uh, and that will, stock will be held either in the family or in a foundation, depending on the, the order of death, for a long time thereafter. So there's no one that's more concerned about the, about the subsequent management issue than I. I mean, this is not something that, uh, that ends at all on my death, and it doesn't end for the Buffett family or the Buffett Foundation. So uh, it, it's a subject that, that, uh, that Charlie and I have both thought about. The most likely situation you got to get away from the idea that it's a one-man show because right now we've got 33,000 people uh, working for Berkshire uh, out there, you know, as we speak, and I'm sitting around, you know, watching movies about myself or something. I mean, you can you can see how vital I am to the place. The uh, so the the but the question and and the other the other thing we do besides allocate capital is we do identify these managers and 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 hopefully we make it attractive for them to stay and work for Berkshire but that you know that doesn't require 150 IQ or anything to do that it it does require a certain sensitivity to why people want to get up in the morning and do what they do and when when i'm not around uh the the logical at some point depends on exactly when it happens, but uh, Charlie's a little older than I am, and uh, it's likely that, that it will be broken into a, into a two-person function again, but not exactly the way Charlie and I function, and that, and that is that there will be uh, someone in charge of investments and capital allocation. I mentioned Lou Simpson's position, because uh, he is younger than I am uh, in, in the annual report, and then someone in charge of, uh, of operations, and we have that person in the organization now. Now, I don't know what the situation will be when I die because it could be in 20 minutes or it could be in 20 years. And, and when that, so I, I can't specifically name the individuals. We have the individuals now for both those functions. We'll have the individuals for the same functions 20 years from now. I don't know, I don't know whether they'll be the same people. Uh, but it's a quite a logical way to run the business. Geico was run that way and still is run that way uh, and has been for some years. It's always struck me as terribly illogical the way property casualty insurance companies are run because they've been dominated by the underwriting side of the business and here they have this important investment side but it's always been virtually every company has been subservient to the underwriting and Geico very logically set up a co-CEO arrangement uh, some years back where uh, originally Bill Snyder and before that but, but Tony nicely ran the underwriting end of the business and, and uh, Lou Simpson ran the investment side, and those are two very different functions. Same person logically doesn't fit both functions in most cases. I mean, it's a rarity when, when, the, when the same person happens to hit for both functions. So Geico worked very well that way, way, still works that way. Lou runs investments, Tony runs underwriting. And Berkshire, slightly different, it's, like, it's a variant on it, but essentially at, some, at Berkshire headquarters you need someone overseeing uh, and not meddling in them too much, but making sure you've got the right manager uh, and, and you're, you're treating them fairly. You need someone on the operating side, you need someone on the investment and capital allocation side. We've got those people now. Uh, and we'll have them, you know, whenever it happens too. But that's the, I, that, that is the structure and we've got some very good businesses. And, you know, nobody's buying C's candy because they think I'm sitting in some office in Omaha, and no one's buying a Geico insurance policy because you know the, my name is there as chairman or CEO. The businesses are marvelous businesses; they'll continue very well, and there will be a capital allocation problem then, just like there is now. And there will be the problem of keeping good managers in place and treating them fairly, and that's a solvable problem. So that's the future, as as seen from Keywood Plaza, Charlie. Yes, uh, if you just run your mind through all the assets, I think you will quickly decide that there are large momentums in place that would do very well without us. Uh, I mean, is Coca-Cola going to suddenly stop selling because some manager's dead at Berkshire Hathaway? You know, are the people going to stop using Gillette razor blades? Uh, is Geico suddenly going to 
stop being intelligently run? Are, is the Nebraska furniture mart going to try any less hard? So the existing assets, you can argue, have been lovingly put together so as not to require continuing intelligence at headquarters. <laughs> and and what there would be a disadvantage in that I think it would be unreasonable to expect that a successor would be as good at making new investments as Warren has been in the past. Well, that's just too damn bad. <laughs> the sympathetic ear over here. <laughs>